Good morning, kingdom blessings and greetings to all of you. This is Kevin Bailey in the great city of Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm with Touch of the Master Healing Ministries International. Uh, greetings to all of my YouTube audience as well. God bless you. As you are coming in, please like and share and hit the red bell down at the bottom of the right hand corner as you are listening to this video. All of you that's on YouTube. All right. Thank you to all of my YouTube subscribers and all of those that will be watching today with Facebook. Uh, I'm running just a little bit behind today. The devil is a liar. I was having some difficulties, uh, but yet we thank God I'm, I'm on anyway because he didn't want this, what I had to say, shared. Amen. So uh, come on in as you are coming in again. Please like and share it with a friend. All right. And hit that red button down there, that bell uh, on the <clears throat> on the YouTube page. Please hit that bell and subscribe and follow us. We have a lot of good, uh, decent content uh, for you there. And that will bring a measure of deliverance. Uh, but we want to talk about uh, this topic today. Yeah, some don't want to talk about it, but we got to talk about it. Let me give just a few seconds for some of you uh, to come in, for some of you to come in. Let me wait for some of you to come in. Amen. And also, uh, please be mindful that uh, my latest book is available. Also, the other book is coming. I am working on it. I haven't got to where I can give a timeline for that book, uh, but we should be uh, done with it, uh, hopefully by the end of this month or at sometime in November. Also, we are planning uh, a gathering, another gathering. Uh, it may not be into December. We're hoping that we can do something in November. Amen. But it may not be and to December, I'll try to go back and discuss these things uh, again before we end the broadcast today. Uh, thank you all so much for your ongoing support, financial support. Uh, and if you need personal deliverance, please go to touchofthemasterhmi.org, sign up. There is a donation that we ask for the deliverance ministry. Amen. And counseling and a spiritual assessment. So uh, don't don't get it wrong. Uh, we're not charging. Some say, well, are you charging for prayer? No, we're going to do counseling, uh, spiritual assessment, biblical counseling, spiritual assessment, then deliverance ministry. And it could be up to two hours. Okay? All right. Uh, and if you would like the soul at the end of the broadcast, uh, you can go back to touchofthemasterhmi.org or you can cash app to T-O-T-M-H-M-I. Even those at YouTube, if you would like to sew, you can cash app at T-O-T-M-H-M-I. All the letters are capital. Amen. Or you could go to our website and it's a link for YouTube on there and you can sew into Touch of the Master HMI. Dot org. If you have benefited from the music ministry and you have been blessed by the ministry, I challenge you to sow and release not your seed only, but value into what it is that we do. Amen. So let me give it a few minutes and for somebody to come in. Amen. Let me give it a few, just a few minutes. Okay, somebody is coming in. Greetings to you. Uh, and as you are coming in, just put the city uh, or the country that you represent as you are coming in. Amen. And we're going to dive right into this. Uh, I'm going to try to only be a few minutes. Uh, let me go ahead and pray as I see some are starting to come in. Let me go ahead and pray. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word that's already anointed. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing that you are releasing to your precious people in Jesus' name. Bring deliverance, healing, breakthrough in Jesus' name and change into the lives of your people. And I thank you that all that come on this live in Jesus' name, their life should never be the same. In Jesus' name, whether it be on YouTube, Facebook, whatever platform we are on, we give you praise for it. We honor and bless your name for the deliverance. And I declare that Satan and all of his cohorts, you cannot hinder 
in Jesus' name. I declare to you, you will not hinder this broadcast in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for all of those who will watch this later on the replay and YouTube and all of the platforms they were on. I pray that you would bless them. And I ask you to cover them with your blood from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. And I give you praise, Lord, for what you're going to say to your people on today concerning Halloween. And the question is, is it darkness or is it light? Lord, I give you praise for what you're going to do. And in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. All right, let's come in here. Uh, I didn't see. Okay, I don't know who this is in here. They didn't comment, but uh, amen. Yeah, just put your city that you're representing on in there. Amen. Uh, in the comment screen, greetings again to all of you. And let's go right uh, into this. And I want to talk about this. Uh, many, <clears throat> you know, they said, Apostle, you always take the, the hard topics. You know, this is not a hard topic. This is a reality. Listen, you shouldn't miss anything that is associated with the world. Nothing. And my question is, what does Halloween have to do with Christ? What does, does it have to do with Christ? I know, just come on in. Hey, Sister Linda, I see you coming in. Amen. Uh, God bless you. Thanks for coming in. But the real question is, is what does Halloween have to do with Christ? What does it have to do with it? Amen. Yeah, and I know some of you that are going to be listening to me, you may even get offended. And I know that they're doing trunk or treat, hallelujah night. Listen, you're wasting your time with the whole concept of it. Amen. Is about candy. You can go to the store and buy your kids some candy and not for Halloween, just buy them some candy. Amen. Now, I'm just going to be real with you. What is it about besides participating in the acts associated with the devil. Amen. Listen, Wiccan and witchcraft will be at an all time high at the on this day. There will be trafficking. Amen. Of, of children, children's sacrifices. There'll be several things that are going on this night. And also Halloween is one of the bloodiest times of the year. There'll be uh, animal sacrifices, child sacrifices. I know the devil don't want me to talk to y'all about this, but the reality is what does the believer, the one that is born again, have to do with Halloween? Amen. What does he have to do with it? Amen. What does the born again believer have to do with Halloween? God bless you, Sister Lynn, Sister Linda, Sister Marlo, hey, Sister Julia, Sister Linda. God bless all of y'all. Thank y'all for joining. Please share it. All right. So if if many of you, I, I share this teaching on, bless it, Sister Lori. I share this teaching, uh, part one, this is part two, about Halloween. From bobbing of apples to the parties. Listen, uh, uh, alcohol is going to be drinking a, uh, uh, you know, very heavily. There'll be accidents. People will be killed. There'll be several things that go on on this day associated with parties. And when we talk about Christ, there's only light and life associated with him. So why will we go waste money on costumes? And now, now some of you are going to say, oh, apostle is okay. I'm going to buy a princess or a good superhero. One that's a, a good super. Listen, you shouldn't be buying a costume at all because it's associated with Halloween. You shouldn't be going to trick or treat. Some say, oh, we're going to have a uh, trunk or treat. Uh, you know, just pull our trunks up on the church lot. Uh, please, listen, don't dishonor God like that. And some of you that will be listening to this are going to get upset because I already seen the black and orange uh, trimming and garland and the pumpkins outside of your church. 
What what is carbon a pumpkin have to do with Christ? Uh, maybe you will find uh, some feet, some hands, and nails within that pumpkin. Those nails that were driven through Christ's hands and his feet, but his legs wasn't broken. Uh, maybe you will find the sword that was stuck in his side that mixed with the water and the blood. Did that pumpkin shed any blood? Does that power, does that pumpkin have the authority to break the power of sin? No, it'll lead you in sin. And some will be going to Halloween parties, but yet profess to be believers or born again. And I'm going to tell you, I rebuke it. It's the old man. It's not the new man. Amen. Let me read this to y'all. Let me read this to y'all in 1 John. Let me go to some scriptures. 1 John uh, 5 and 18. All right. And 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 I go into more the uh the history of Halloween, but the reality is uh, you shouldn't be celebrating it. Putting a candle in your jack-o'-lantern, you know, that invites an evil spirit to, to the house. And why would you be, let me talk about this demon too. Why would you take your children to a haunted house to invoke fear and demonic spirits on them and vampires and watching Amityville horror, twilight, things we shouldn't be watching. You wonder why the children can't sleep or they having nightmares or you having nightmares because you have elected to watch these things. Let me read this scripture to you. I I'm not going to be too long with y'all today. It says, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Now, listen, uh, so some will look at that and say, oh, you know, uh, uh, apostle, what are you talking about? You got to be perfect. No, the apostle John teaches uh, that as a believer of being born again, you cannot live a life of unrepentant sin or a life characterized by sin. Uh, amen. And if we do, then how can we belong to the family of God? And the reason that a Christian um, uh, will persist in unrepentant sin is that he has not really been born again. They made a confession with their mouth and said they believed in their heart. But listen, God promised to keep the believer from the relentless temptation of the wicked one. And it's no temptation that he won't give you a way out of. Are y'all there? This is what the word says. And it says that, and so he wasn't talking about perfectionism. He said that you must live a life of, un, of repentance. You must be repent and confess your sins as a born again believer. Listen to me closely. Listen to me closely. Because, and some of us have a fear. Of, of Satan as well. The Bible says also that, that, that the greater one, well, let me go over here. It says, I'm going to just read my notes. Power that God gives is sufficient to deal with the threat of evil spirits, but God's promises are of God. Little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's in first John four and four. So his power that is within you is greater than Satan's power. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. But one of the biggest tricks of Satan is he loves to torment the believer with fear. But his love and knowing that he loves you keeps you from that torment. Amen. A disciplined mind also can help you to live a victorious life. Remove all the silly superstitions. Get rid of that stuff. The old wives fables and uh, the folklore, the witchcraft. But why would any believer want to indulge in this witchcraft? You must saturate your mind in the words, the word of God. Amen. And so, and, and so some are, are talking about, but, uh, haunted houses and, 
Oh, it's okay. And let them dress up. Listen, the devil is a lie. Satan will always bring something counterfeit and it appears to be innocent and say, Oh, we, we, we're not hurt. Nobody. They not hurt nobody. Just give them some candy. Apostle is okay. We've never celebrated that. We've never decorated. I ain't going to even talk about the other stuff that we do, but, but amen. All right. But a person that walks with God, listen to me closely in the fullness of the Holy spirit shouldn't be threatened by demons. You walk it in obedience, righteousness, Yet the unbeliever or the backslidden, anyone who's yielded to sin and is out from underneath the umbrella of God, because of course, sin separates us from God. Amen. Then you in spiritual demon, a danger and demonic forces, no matter where you are, they'll come and try to attack you. Amen. So no one should remain anywhere where there are demonic forces at work or go to haunted houses or attend parties that are associated with the devil. I know some of you are going to say, well, apostle, they have a hallelujah night. Look, listen, you better be doing some intercession and prayer on the 31st because murder is going to be at all time high drunkenness. Are right, y'all listen to me? Uh, some will be astral projecting, teleporting, Levitation, declaring curses. Yeah, over the Christians and believers. And listen, they love when believers participate in, in this darkness. Amen. They love it. Let me read in verse 20. It says that we know that the son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know. I'm in first John five and verse 20. Him who is true, and we are in him who is true, and his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Amen. Good morning, Sister Sherry. Thank you for joining us today. Amen. Y'all see this? 1 John 5, 18 through 20. And then listen, in verse 21, it says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. From idolatry. Amen. It said, keep yourself from it. Amen. Let's go to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, and then we're going to go over to Peter. 1 John chapter 1. Let me, let me get through this. 1 John chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 5. First John chapter one and verse five and six, it says, this is the message which you have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. There's no darkness associated with Halloween in him. Let's read verse six. And if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. This is the word of God. Do y'all want to read verse 7? Well, let's read verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Y'all see that? Let's go to 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Look what it says to you. I'm saying this to you. This is what it said for you. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, not, not a, a witch, a goon, a goblin, a vampire, or, or whatever superhero you try. <laughs> Amen. Let me behave. Y'all stay with me. But look what it says. It says his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's no darkness associated with Christ. Amen. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Colossians. 
Let's go to the book of Colossians. Now, matter of fact, let's go to Titus. Let's go to Titus because we're going to pass that book. Let's go to Titus. Let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. I know that the devil is the devil is upset today. So, well, oh, you could have just went and took him over there to just Titus chapter one and fifteen. The devil is a lie. Don't expose your children to this. Don't expose them to demonic personalities and fear and and they're having nightmares and and terrors and horrors because you don't took them to the 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 haunted house. Look what it says: to the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. But let's look at verse 16. First, uh, uh, Titus 1 and verse 15. Let's look at verse 16. It says, they profess, you profess to know God, but in works they deny him. But in works, y'all see this? By your behavior. But but you're born again, right? You're a believer, right? It says, by your works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified from every good work. I know. J just say amen or, or just say ouch. And look at if you've been connected to this, repent of it. Don't, don't expose your children to this uh, foolishness. Let's go to the book of Thess First Thessalonians. First Thess Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's go to Thess First Thessalonians chapter 5. Amen. And let's look at, let's look at verse 21. Now, Paul talks about the prophetic in this, and this is reference to the prophetic. And But let's look at verse 22. But it says, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Abstain from every form of evil. Is Halloween evil? Is it associated with darkness or light? Are y'all there? Are y'all there? <laughs> y'all stay with me. All right, let's go. Let's go over to. Let's go over to uh, Colossians. Did we go to Colossians? Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one, 13 and 14. Look what it says in Colossians. Are y'all there? Oh, y'all for quiet today. Colossians chapter 1 and 13 and 14. It says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the, into the haunted house and, and, and to the child of the devil. Is, is that what it say? <laughs> he, he's conveyed us into the, the kingdom of the devil. It's, let me go back and read <laughs> He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood. Y'all see this? The forgiveness of sins. But verse 13, it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered you from the power of darkness. And conveyed you into, this is if you are born again believer. If you're not, then you need to receive Christ. Repent. Come out of the witchcraft. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Some are afraid of witchcraft. Some are afraid of witches. Lord, help us. Not knowing that it's a greater one that's in you and you can exercise power and authority over the enemy. I know some of, some, some of them are saying, you know, well, you know, leave the devil alone, apostle. Don't give the devil no credit. Leave him alone. Listen, you leaving him alone or being scared of him ain't going to keep him from trying to put you in bondage. That greater one, which is in you, is what's working. Greater is he that is in you. 
It's the power of the son of the living God. He's living on the inside of you. And you should carry the dying of the Lord in your body. There's a power to come with those that are dead. Dead to the things of the world. Dead to the sin. Dead to the foolishness and darkness of the world. Amen. Let me, let me go over here to, let me cross this out. Let's go over here to Ephesians. Let's go over here to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Look what it says. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. And then we're going to read down to 11 and 12. Yeah, and, and verse 16. Ephesians 5 and verse 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Verse 11, it says, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And that's what we're doing today. We're exposing them. And verse 12 says, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But in verse, look at it, verse 13. This is very powerful. But in all things, this is in Ephesians 5. 8, 11, 12, and 13, it says, But in all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. And some of you need to wake from your sleep, arise from the dead. Amen? So that Christ may give you light, power, authority. Amen? Let's go over here to the book of Romans. Y'all stay with me. I'm going to let y'all go in a minute. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Look what it says. Interesting. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And verse 12 and 13. Let's read. Romans chapter 13 and verse 12 says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Imagine putting the armor of light. Do you know what armor is? Put on the armor of light. This must be put on the armor associated with Christ. When you got armor on, it protects you from the things of the world, from arrows that fly by the night and the day. It protects you. Put on the armor. It should be worn as, you know, customary clothing, armor of light. And let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverie and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, and not in strife and envy. And that's exactly what's going on on that night. Drunkenness, lust, envy, uh, bobbing for apples, witchcraft, uh, uh, taking potions, throwing over the left shoulder and, and see if you're going to get a date and if you're going to have love this next year. All this foolishness. And really, it was supposed to be a believer's holiday on November the 1st. Celebrate it. But the devil had to put the counterfeit holiday 1031 in there. Where he celebrated. Make your choice and no longer walk in darkness. Amen. Let's go. Let's go over here to uh, the book of John. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 1. Let's go to John. John chapter 1. And let's look at verse 5. I'm all, We're almost there. And then we're going to go. Well, no, matter of fact. Let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And let's look at verse 19 through 21. John chapter 3, 19 through 21. And then we'll look at John chapter 1 and verse 5 and 6. Okay? Look what John chapter 3 and 19 says, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light 
because their deeds were evil. Y'all see this? For everyone practicing evil, why would you practice Halloween? Why would you practice the evil associated with that? Look what it says here. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. No, did it say that they've been done in the devil? Your deeds have been done in the devil. It's a price to pray. Because as a believer, you, there must be a level of holiness and righteousness. Are y'all there? You got to grow. You can't continue with the same sporadic uh, behaviors, enforcing curses in the bloodline. Mama did it. But Poopy Joe did it. Uh, baby. Kid. Look. Listen, be the one that break those curses. You ain't going to celebrate those pagan holidays. Why would you celebrate, hey man, these holidays? Why would you celebrate it? And it has nothing to do with Christ. And as I said earlier, the pumpkin didn't take any nails in, in, in his arms. No matter how you decorate it. No matter you putting a, light, a candle on the inside of it, there's no light in it associated with Christ. It didn't take any nails in the hands, in the feet. A sword wasn't put in the side. Oh, y'all listen to me. That only happened to Jesus Christ. Amen. Was sweat being poured out of his eyes? Because he was in Gethsemane trying to win this battle back for us in the Garden of Gethsemane where Adam lost it in, the, in Eden and in the Garden. Are y'all listening to me? No. The answer to that is no. Let's look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And let's look at 5 and 6. It says, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. This is in John chapter 1, 5, and 6. Now I'm reading 7 and 8. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That light is connected to Jesus Christ. The savior of the world. And some of you, he's just a teacher, but he's not the mas your master and Lord. And as a born again believer, why would you still have those appetites that are associated with the world? And why would you desire to celebrate evil or even call Last scripture, or even call something bad good. These are the times that we're in. Something that the, the light and the gospel and everything associated with Christ, they call it bad. And some are going to say, if you tell them about it, you're being judgmental. I'm going to tell you this. The devil is a lie. They're going to say, oh, God, know my heart. Oh, you being judgmental. The devil is a lie. I just read the scriptures to you. Go and read Ephesians 5 and 8 to them. You're not to continue in darkness. You are to walk in the light. Amen. Now, tell them to judge that. And, and see what God has to say about that. Oh, he know my heart. He know what, I'm, what I really mean. No, the devil is a lie. He knows my heart. He, he, you know, I mean well. Meaning well is not obedience. Come from the darkness. Be the curse breaker in the family. Be the one that says no. Isaiah 5 and 20. And 21. Well, we'll even read 22 because they're going to be drinking a lot of alcohol this night. It said, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. This is in Isaiah 5 and 20. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness, or who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is in Isaiah 5 and 20 and 21. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. 
See this? And prudent in their own sight. What are those in verse 21 who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight? What are the men mighty at drinking wine? What are men valued for mixing intoxicating drinks? Y'all see this? It's right here. No more excuses. The believer, yeah, Sister Lynn, is Isaiah 5, 20 and 21. Isaiah 5, 20, 21, and just going to read verse 22. Listen, I'm challenging you to pray. If you need deliverance, raise your hand. All right? But I'm going to pray and we're going to conclude today. But the reality is this. The reality is this. Halloween has nothing to do with Jesus. And there's no light in it at all. It's darkness associated with it. He has brought you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. But guess what? Some of you have to become more disciplined and make better decisions. And let me share this. You don't need deliverance for everything. You need to make better decisions. And you need to become disciplined in daily and Christian life. And decide that you're going to live for God, although it's not possible. Yeah. We don't love the devil. We cast him out. But we will operate in love. Amen. Because no matter how anointed and gifted we are, if we don't have love, we mean nasty and ugly, then we're just the devil that's operating in the gift. Are y'all listening to me? And those gifts operate without repentance. So you have to love, but we don't love the devil. We cast them out. Amen? Go to your people and tell them the answer is no. Don't come to me about celebrating it. I don't want no caramel apples. Uh, we ain't bobbing for the apples. And we definitely not having a party. And don't knock at my door for treats. Because I ain't connected with no philosophy that celebrates the devil. All right? Does that candy, is, is that candy all negative about the blood? Does it have the blood? If you bite it, will it have the blood? Look, some of you, when you get the candy, it might have razor blades in it. It may be poison. Listen. It doesn't matter what they are saying. It seems innocent. But it's darkness. Amen? It's darkness. There's no light associated with it. None. And it's associated with the world. Are you, according to James 4 and 4, are you in a friendship with the world as an enmity to God? Are you an enemy of God because you love the things of the world? Read 1 John 2, 15 through 16. Satan is the ruler of this world. He's a wicked one. You, you all know that. But why succumb to the things that the world offers when you know that they're wrong? Yeah. It seems innocent. It appears to, to, to be harmless. But the bondage that it will put you in for years or that it will put your children in for years outweighs just not participating in it, in it at all. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Spirit and the anointing that should come unto your people. And if there's anyone that is listening that has participated in these vile acts and this darkness, I ask you now through the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to move in their hearts and bring repentance. And I declare that every familiar spirit, 
and every spirit associated with witchcraft for wicked or child sacrifice, bloodletting, whatever it is, animal sacrifices, I nullify them in the realm of the spirit. And I declare that your precious blood that is connected to the living God who gives eternal life and the hope of Christ in them shall arise and that demonic spirit shall leave now in Jesus' name. Go in the name of Jesus. And I break every demonic uh, hindrance and every curse associated with Halloween through incantations, impartations, bewitchments, channeling, and even the spirits, even of the ghosts in Jesus' name, and spirits associated with suicide in Jesus' name, or double mindedness. I bind every demonic personality in the name of Jesus, and all spirits of compromise in the name of Jesus. And I break and destroy every demonic altar in the family lines, mother and father's side, back to 60 generation. Let those altars be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you will come out of agreement with the idol worship, the witchcraft, and everything else associated, the rituals, the curses, the vows, the oaths associated with Halloween. I destroy and break it off you through the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing, and let the blood saturate you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare that all curses that were released on you or your children when you trick-or-treated or when you car up, whatever it is that you did or celebrated this demonic holiday, it's broken and destroyed off of you by the authority of Jesus. The redemptive power of Christ sets you free and breaks you free. And Lord, I thank you that those that don't know you in the partner of their sins, they shall repent and come to know you in the partnering of their sins. In Jesus' name, everyone that has listened and those on the replay, I declare, if you don't know Jesus, you shall repent and ask him to come in your heart and confess with your mouth and believe that he is the son of God and that he may grant you eternal life and welcome you into the kingdom the kingdom of the light, the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I give you praise for it now. All heaviness, all despair, any depression, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Pressure from friends, pressure from relatives concerning this holiday. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you are the light of the Lord in Jesus' name. And you walk in that marvelous light because you have been delivered from all darkness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Uh, God bless all of you and thank you for the seeds last week uh, that were released concerning the gathering. Uh, we're trying to get some dates again. Let me do a quick update with that. We're trying to get some dates in November. Uh, I like for all that can to come. Uh, I'll try to let you know ahead of time, but it may not be until December, uh, that first week. Uh, and I, I don't care if it's, uh, holiday time. Listen, uh, the, the kingdom does not stop because of it. Now we will take a break, but we may do a gathering, an apostolic gathering where we'll do some hands on training, teaching on deliverance, uh, leadership, the, uh, the structure of the church, uh, the prophetic. Hopefully we'll be able to get some good intense time in and training and also have a question and answer time where we'll answer some questions that many may have. Uh, not just about the deliverance ministry, but just about ministry as a whole. Amen. And listen, if you don't love people and you're afraid of being hated and want everybody to speak well of you and like you look, it's something to come and listen to me and follow me to hate me. Amen. They hated Jesus. Get over it. If you ain't prepared to be attacked and, and, and come against, look, get over it. You ain't ready to do no ministry. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would like to sow and the ministry has been a blessing to you and I trust me, uh, we will let you guys know. And also we're going to be consecrating, uh, through next week. Uh, our, uh, those who hopefully you've got your email, you will join us. Those who have not, please message me. We'll give you the information. You can join us 
in that time of consecration. Amen. All right. Um, and if you would like to sow, amen, go to touchofthemasterhmi.org or go to Cash App at uh, T-O-T-M-H-M-I and sow. If the ministry has benefited you, been a blessing to you, so, amen? And we'll get you those dates in enough time when you can plan and come and be with us and so we can uh, dive in. And so we can deal with some, some have demonic foundations, some have demonic beliefs, you know what I mean? But so that we can dive in, I hope that uh, you will be able to come. You'll be blessed by it. Those who came the last time, well, they haven't shared their testimonies. I don't know, but I believe that they were blessed by the ministry. It was only two days. We're going to try to, it'll be two or maybe three days, but the most it'll be two. Um, you'll be blessed by the ministry. Amen. And thank all of you that congratulated me. I didn't get to tell everybody even about that, but yeah, they have recognized us. Uh, in all of the parliament of Africa for the work that we are doing worldwide. Those who partner with us will send you a report at the end of the year of what we have done with the resources and how you are helping us to impact. Amen. We'll send you a letter to thank you and let you know what you have helped us do. Amen. So we appreciate all of you. God bless all of you. Have a good rest of the week um, and be encouraged. And we'll see you soon, hopefully next week. Amen. God bless all of you. Have a great week.